Hey, it's Ernesto, and today I want to talk about a theory I have around Saberbox 3 from Cable Guys. Saberbox 3 will make beginners better music makers, better at sound design, better at effects modulation, and better at experimenting with sound. Before I explain myself, give me a few seconds to show you how Saberbox works. This plugin has nine multiband effects called Shapers, and each Shapers effect is controlled by one of the most flexible LFOs ever. The LFO can be synced to your project's BPM, MIDI triggered, triggered by audio transients, or an envelope that follows the dynamics of your sound. And if you want to try it out, Cable Guys has a free demo for you to download. There's a link below for more details. So how does Saberbox 3 make you a better artist? To answer that, here's my experience and what I'm calling the three stages of Saberbox 3. Stage one, one trick pony. I picked up Saberbox because I saw a couple of cool tricks in a YouTube video. One trick was achieving a super clean sidechain, which you can do by first placing volume shaper on the kick. We'll select trim and then select audio here so that the LFO restarts whenever audio is detected. We'll align the shape with the kick waveform and even shape the tail if we want. Then we'll copy and paste this shaper box onto the layer we want to sidechain. And I'll assign the sidechain to the kick inside my DAW. Then I'll right click the LFO, select flip vertical. So now this LFO is mirroring the kick's LFO shape. And then I'll just click the sidechain button here inside shaper box. And now this sidechain should work perfectly with the kick. If I want to make it more transparent, I'll adjust the band here so that the sidechain ignores what's in the high band. I think that sounds so much more precise than I could have done with stock plugins. Before Shaper Box and after. Now I didn't realize it at first, but in addition to getting that clean sidechain, I was learning many lessons around sidechain compression, like understanding the difference between a kick's transient body and tail, and honing in my skills at knowing where I want that ducking to happen. All right, here comes stage two, getting fancy. In this stage, I started experimenting by using more than one shaper at once, drawing different LFO shapes across each band, and maybe even drawing in a really complex LFO shape. For example, here's how I like to add character and color to a bass synth. Right now, it, it sounds fine, but it's a little plain and safe. So I like to combine the noise shaper, drive shaper, and crush shaper to help make it more interesting. Starting with Noise Shaper, I just have a vintage console happening, but I made sure to filter the noise so only the high end is coming through. And I enabled Envelope Follow so that the noise is a dynamic layer that follows the bass rather than a static one. Then I added in Drive Shaper. On this module, I made use of the three multibands by customizing the settings in each band. The biggest factors are giving each band a different drive style and LFO shape and mix level. Without it, a little too clean and pristine, but with Drive Shaper, we get that lovely fuzz I was looking for. And then we finish it off with Crush Shaper. I just wanted to bit crush the mid and high frequencies, but I gave the bits and resample controls different LFO shapes to give it some movement. And the mix is quite low on this one. Before. And after. What a difference. Once again, I'm exploring multiple concepts at once. I'm learning how to add color and texture to a sound. I'm learning the importance of adding movement through modulation, and I'm learning more about distortion and bit crushing. And what I'm learning here is not just exclusive to Shaperbox. I can apply these lessons to other plugins, thereby making me a little better at all my plugins. Lastly is stage three, opening Pandora's presets. Yeah, that's a dumb name, but just please stick with me. For example, the other day I discovered this preset. I really love how I totally flipped the sample by adding in a repeat and even giving it a plucky rhythm. From there, I checked out what was going on under the hood and learned that I can use Time Shaper to create that repeating effect. And the pluckiness is made with a simple LFO and volume shaper. And surprisingly, it used sort of a step LFO inside Drive Shaper to emphasize some of the plucks made by volume shaper, which honestly, using modulation within Drive Shaper to create rhythm is something I never would have figured out. And again, I'm excited to apply these sound design concepts to other plugins, but it all started with Saberbox. And I hope you see the point I'm trying to make. This plugin isn't just about adding some cool effects. I'm constantly learning sound design principles that can be used in and outside of Saberbox 3. And because of that, I'm becoming better at this music producer thing. And I wouldn't be surprised if you experienced a similar story. Try Saberbox 3 for free by clicking the link down below. And check out my favorite plugins in this playlist here. Thanks for watching. Later.